I enter through the blood of the Lamb. Every one of the times I go and listen to this at work, you can't adjust it when you turn on the speaker and it's like, ah, and everyone's looking at it. It's like, try to just click it down, you know, because it's disrupting everyone. But so many times, it's like, look at that's you. That's you on there. Yeah? yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is it praying? Is it praying? Is it playing? Is it praying and playing? Yes. Playing and recording and praying. Praise God. Welcome everyone. Good morning. I love you. You all look wonderful and blessed and, and dressed up nice and smiley. And I don't feel a lot of oppression like I had in the past weeks. So, um, and you know what? There's no sense carrying that nonsense around with you. But everyone is where they are. No matter where you go, there you be. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So, the name of this message, if you haven't seen it up there or you're not following in, by the way, welcome to all those that are tuning in, that will tune in and that are listening. I bless you and pray and praise God for you. We couldn't do what we do without you, and it's because of you and because of all those that are out there that need to hear the Word of God and, and have the light of the gospel spread and poured out over them is why we do what we do, because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and, and thanksgiving and grace. Um, I just welcome you and thank you for tuning in. If you're going to, if you watch in the future, I speak blessings and the anointing over you. Father, I thank you that I you can cover me in your blood and that you wash me in your word and that you use my mouth as an oracle, God, to speak perfection because there's nothing that I can do and there's nothing that I can give to any one of these people. But they should hear and will hear and, and be listening for your voice and for the conviction in their own hearts and for the instructions in righteousness to be and stay on the right path as your word says in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm just going to read something really quick which is an excerpt or a takeoff from Wednesday's Bible study where we'll be going on this Wednesday God willing is my son keep thy father's commandments and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continuously upon thy heart, and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee, and when thou sleepest, it shall keep thee, and when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and the reproofs are of instructions are the way of life, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of the strange woman. Amen? Amen. So we know that the tempter, the strange woman, the flattery of the stranger is the one that tempts our mind from our flesh and tempts us with the lusts of Babylon, which is the world and the world's temptations, the greed, the, um, you know, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life that thinks we can do whatever we want and it exalts itself against the knowledge and wisdom of God and has you walking in disobedience and you think everything's cool. And you don't even know it. And he says that we think we're rich and we're clothed and we're of need of nothing. But he says you don't even know that you're blind, naked, and poor. Amen? Because you don't see yourself spiritually. You're just looking at yourself naturally. You know, the, you know, everyone looks beautifully dressed and their hair's all nice and they're all dressed well and looking glowing and, and, and gorgeous and beautiful. But what's in your heart? What are you struggling with? What are you dealing with? What what's happening? And and you know what emotions are you going through? What what bondages are you tied up and chained to? Amen. Amen. So the name of the message is "Whose Child Are You?" Amen. Amen. It's coming out of Ephesians five. So if you wanna um, follow along with the with the word, we're going into Ephesians chapter five, starting in one through, I don't know, where, wherever the Spirit leads us to. Okay, like once again, I'm telling you that this is not to condemn you or to judge you, but it is to guide you, instruct you, and correct you. That's why I wrote, read um, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 22 through. Amen? So, with that said, I wanted to say, um, you know, does anyone know what a plumb line is? You ever see somebody that they're doing a driveway or doing a sidewalk or a stone wall and you see they'll have a stake in the ground and they'll have a line going. Some of the people are shaking their head because they know what I'm talking about. Well, a chalk line, it's a plumb line, it's the same thing. 
what are the, you go from one point to the next point and you make a straight line so that everything that's filled in will be right in its space in its right spot and you can know that you don't go off course you stay where you're supposed to be kinda um you mean if you were gonna do pinstripes on the side of a car you know you're gonna put it on there it has to be exactly along the edge of the fold of the fender and you know you want to get it even on both sides and perfect so you use a what's called a plumb line and the Bible is our plumb line for righteousness it's the thing that keeps us and guides us in the right direction and shows us where we're out of order or in the wrong place or doing things that are not pleasing and they're not of God's will and that if you continue in that you're rebellious and you're walking in sin and, and you're going to be blinded and corrupted by the evil one and your flesh is going to take over and be dominant through the doors and avenues that are opened by your disobedience without you even knowing it so if you've been following along with Proverbs with us weekly and you've been following the ministry it's always progressive revelation it's always instruction in righteousness and it's always teaching the Spirit of God is always leading and guiding and instructing us through love and correction so that we stay in the path of the narrow and straight way that leads to heaven that few be there that are found on it Amen. wide is the road and broad is the path that leads to death and destruction and many there be on it and we're talking about church people we're not talking about people that don't know god amen, amen. Ephesians 5 no no i know just... hallelujah ephesians 5 so remember whose child are you so as the as the message unfolds it's going to give you parameters or different camps in other words which camp are you camping in or where are you camping out or where is your life going? Where are you walking? Are you walking with the Lord and in obedience and, and are you denying yourself and crucifying your flesh and walking with him continuously ever seeking? Remember last week's message, Romans 2.9? Um, or are you walking in your own will, asking God to bless you, thinking that everything's cool? And you don't even realize and know that you're in rebellion and that you're doing things that are going to get you places where you don't want to be. You'll be groping around in the darkness, banging your head against the wall and stubbing your foot and not knowing why. Amen? That's the tricks and the schemes and the snares of the devil. That he wants to get you to live in Babylon. Babylon is the world and the world system or Egypt. You know, yeah. the, we got delivered from Babylon. We got delivered out of Egypt, but we we stand, we stand, you know. Almost went into the message of next week. <laughs> the, you know, I don't have the scripture, otherwise I would have went right into it because of the leading of the Spirit of God. But it's so big and so powerful and so revelatory and it's so simple and God showed it to me and just like it was a jaw dropper as always when God reveals his truth to you and then it's been there and you read it hundreds of times and then he shows you what it means and how it how, what it means to the body of Christ and those are the rewards of, of um, promotion spiritual promotion comes through revelation knowledge and if you're not spending time with him you're not reading you're not gonna get none it's as simple as that what you put in is what you get out well God loves you and he wants to bless you but he's not gonna give you things to hurt yourself with Amen. He's trying to keep us from hurting ourselves out of the ignorance that lies in us because we don't understand and realize spiritual laws are in operation whether you know them, see them, or believe them. They still govern the earth. And the devil knows all about them. And, he's, and he uses everything he can against us. And against our. that's why it says my people perish for lack of knowledge. Amen? Hallelujah. Be So, you know, the Bible says, I am the Lord of Genesis. I don't even know the exact verses. It says, I am the Lord thy God, I am, I am the Lord thy God, walk before me perfect, for I am perfect. And, and, you know, it means to be holy, and to be sanctified, and to be consecrated, which means to surrender your life to God. You know, whose child are you? Do you see Nani? She's, you know, this is not to condemn anyone, right? She's sitting there, she's quiet, she's calm, she's submitted she's looking at her bible okay and, and and then you have other children you got to understand that god is our father right mm -hmm. so we're all children right i'm just using this as a, a very simple analogy because we're watching it 
And then we have someone that is doing what they want, and of course he's younger, he doesn't really know that much, but he's doing what he wants, he wants his will, and he doesn't care about what's going on. He's oblivious to what's going on, right? So you have two different children, two different actions, two different attitudes, two different emotions, two different wills. Everyone is different, but we're all under the grace of God to walk in the Spirit, right? Amen? Amen. He says... Remember, here's the instruction in Ephesians 5. Be ye, excuse me, be ye, example, that's an exa exact example of what I'm talking about, right? And I'm not picking on him. He's a little kid. He doesn't know anybody. But I'm just saying is that as we are all children of God, and we all have our own will, we all have our own thoughts, and we all have our own ideas, and we all have what we think we want, and what we think we know is good, and what we think we know is profitable for us, because we've been brought up in that. But if we haven't been renewed in our mind and know what God wants, and what, let me tell you something, whatever plan you can think of think of your life, and no matter what you think that, you know, no matter your, if you use your wildest imaginations of what you might think you would have or want, or, you know, you know endless amounts of money or whatever it might be, that it doesn't compare, it doesn't even come close to the promises and the and the purpose that God has and, and the plan he has for your life if you follow it. Amen? Amen. Amen. It doesn't mean it's not going to be filled with pain or suffering. But the times that are painful and suffering is the sweetest times in the spirit when God gets closest to you and shows you things because he uses those things to draw us to him. And without those things, we would not be drawn to him. We would not run to him. We wouldn't ask. We wouldn't be praying to him. We wouldn't be trying to figure out life and why this one is gone and that one is gone and why this one did this to me and how come that one did that to me and why I don't get along with this one and how come I don't, you know, all these different things that are part of our everyday life bombard us and 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 in our natural mind we can't figure it out we get overwhelmed that's why people run to alcohol and drugs and gambling and sex and all the different things that are there that are temporary temporary pleasure to take your mind off the the long-term stuff the stuff that really is eating you and bothering you that you haven't dealt with yet that you don't want to look at you don't want to face it because it's too overwhelming and you don't know the answers but god does and his word gives them to you Amen. And if you seek him, you will find him, and he will answer you. Amen. 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 So, he says, remember, here, why did I say this about kids? It's not to insult or judge anyone. It's right here, the first line is, be, he's, this is Paul talking to us, the body of Christ, for all eternity, through the Spirit of God. Amen. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Followers. This is what we're commanded to do. Be followers of God as unruly, out of control, wild men or filled with your flesh and your lusts and the things that you like and the things that make you happy or the things that make you feel good about yourself or follow God as a dear child. You know, there's a difference between a child and a dear child. A dear child is one that is obedient, submitted, knows who her parents are and and are calm and um acting and behaving the way they're taught and there's parameters that are enforced by love so that they can grow and operate and mature and become part of society and be useful and not be out of control and wild and part of you know destruction and and, and getting into all kinds of situations that the world gives you as avenues to sidestep the growth and and the to be prosperous in life there's a lot of different avenues and a lot of different ways that the world offers and they all lead to the jails institutions and death you know if you try to get there you know earn your money the fast way the easy way through drugs and manipulating and stepping on people and all the different things that the world tells you that you can do and get ahead if you don't do it in the way God tells you then you're going to end up with a big mess and a lot of problems and if you don't repent and receive Christ then you're going to end up separated from him for all eternity Amen? And, and you don't want to do that. If you train up a child in the way he should go when he is young, then when he's old, he will not depart from it. But that works both ways, right? That works in let him go wild and have the TV.
grow them up and tell that have the TV or the world or the devil, devil vision grow your child in front of it and it just bombard them with the spirits of, of antichrist that are telling you about all the things that we're going to see right here, right now. You're going to see all those things that come at us. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. So he says, be, be therefore followers of God as dear children, right? So we're d dear to God. We're, we understand that he's our father. We understand that his purpose, his will is the best for us. We understand that if, no matter what we feel like, no matter what it looks like, that the best thing is always to do what's right and to do what God's will is. And to have and know God's will, you have to study the Bible. And you have to not only memorize it and encompass it and, and, and fill it in on your heart, you have to walk in it so that when you go and when you have a decision like the chapter 6 in Proverbs said is when you have something you need to know what where which way to turn you know what do I do in this situation what do I do here what do I do there what do I do with this opportunity what do I do with that opportunity you know am I supposed to be around this one or should I hang out with that one all those questions that you have that you don't know God knows he has the answers and if you get quiet and listen he'll tell you don't be around them. That they're not. Their motives are not pure. Don't go hang around with them. They're going to drag you in the wrong direction. Don't you know all those things and those questions that happen in our mind? You know, should I get involved in this this relationship? Should I should I invest in this opportunity? Should I buy this? Is this your will? Is this going to produce, or am I trying to force, you know, and ask for your blessings? He said. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. The things that will add unto you is all the things that you need that you don't have knowledge of on your own. Those are the things. Everything will be given to you. Direction, protection, health, prosperity, wealth, marriage, wife, husband, friends. You know, all the things that shalom, the shalom of God is blessed in every area of your life. And, and walking in God's peace and following that. But we have to have a part in it. God will do his part if you'll do yours. Amen. But he'll also let you do whatever you want because he loves you that much that he's not going to force himself on you. So we're giving instructions in righteousness today, right? Amen. Therefore, as followers of God, as dear children, it says, and walk in love. Okay? A dear child will walk in love. A, a child of God will always walk in love. Faith, now remember, now abideth faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love, and love will never fail. 1 Corinthians 14, 14. Um, a hallmark of a believer, of a follower of God, a child of God, is walking in love at all times. No matter what comes at you, no matter what's spoken to you, no matter how you're treated, no matter how you are dishonored or you know, insulted or aggravated, your response is love. From an unfeigned heart without dissimulation. I'm not even going to go into explaining what that means because that means that you don't pick and choose who gets loved and who doesn't, and you don't separate those that you like to those that you're to love. You know, some people are harder to like than others, but we're commanded to love everybody. And if you don't love yourself and you haven't forgiven yourself, then how are you going to love anyone else? If you're walking around in anger and you're miserable and you've got all kinds of issues that you never dealt with, then those are going to come out everywhere. Don't matter. It's just a matter until you get poked in the right place. And then it's going to happen, right? <coughs> Everyone says amen because they've already experienced it, right? Amen. Praise God. If you're human, then, then it's happened to you. And walk in love. Now, he's given us an example. As Christ also has loved us. You know, I don't know about you, but anyone here that has a relationship or that has been touched by the Spirit of God, and all of you have, because you wouldn't be here, okay? He says, Christ, he said, in, in Romans it says, Christ died for us while we were yet still sinners. And that he loves us all the time, no matter what, no matter if we're obedient or disobedient. I'm just talking about the consequences. There's consequences on our end. He, it's not, his love's not going to change for you, but he's going to, you know, just like you love Nani, if she got herself or involved in something that wasn't good, you'd still love her and she'd still be your daughter, but you would wish that she wouldn't do that. You know, when your older daughters, they have more free will because they're more mature and they have more of a, a mind of their own. And, and, you know, well, you know, I'm 19 or I'm 18 or I'm 16, don't tell me, Mom, or don't tell me, Dad, you know. Because I did the same thing. You know, I said, all the things my mother told me, I was like, yeah, okay, I just listened. And I went right around doing what I wanted to do. And it got me in a big mess. 
and I realize now that I'm going to be 59, that everything she told me was, was right. Everything she told me and warned me against that I didn't do was right. Everything that she ever said that I thought we, she was old and didn't know what she was talking about was all right. Every single part. There's not one thing that she never did that was right that she told me. And everything I thought she said was wrong. And I didn't listen. And I ended up in a big mess. A real big mess. A lifelong mess. Amen? That's what we're talking about. And the warning of eternity. Because that, that, when that comes, there's no more choice. It's over. It's over. You're going to be bound there forever. Amen? Amen? So he says, as Christ, he says, walk in love as dear children, as Christ also hath loved us and has given himself for us as an offer, as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. You know, the only reason why we can be saved, the only reason why we can be forgiven, the only reason why God loves us is because of what Christ did on the cross. Amen. He came and he paid the price of our rebellion and disobedience. But we still have to choose to walk in righteousness. We have to choose to walk in obedience. Or he, we can walk in disobedience and go off the wayward path. This is what I'm talking about. The name of the message is, Whose Child Are You? In other words, who are you walking under? Are you are, Is your experience, your desires, your temptations, your the things that you think that are good for you are running your life, or is the Word of God running your life? Are you surrendered to the will of God, or are you walking in your will asking God to bless what you're doing? Amen. And not realizing that it's out of His will, and He's not answering, you're not hearing from Him because He doesn't approve of it, but He still loves you. But it doesn't, He's not, you know, we can do what we want. You can walk outside and step in front of a tractor trailer truck and it's going to run you over. It's not God's will, but you can still do it, right? People every day, unfortunately, commit suicide. And, and people are committing suicide slowly by the things they participate in all the time, not knowing. Drowning themselves in drugs, drowning themselves in alcohol, destroying their future, destroying their hope, destroying their soul, destroying any outlook of, of prosperity and hope by drowning it out with the things that the world says will help you when it really just destroys you and it brings you to destruction. Are, are we getting this? Amen. 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 So he says, walk in love as Christ had also loved us and have given himself for an offering and a, sa a savor as a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. You know, it says, present your bodies a living sacrifice unto God, holy, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. Holy, can completely give your life over to God, for this is what you're, what you're called to. We're called to die to ourselves and to know that our life is not our own. We're bought with pride, with Christ, with the price. When he died in baptism and he died in spiritual death, we're, we died with him in baptism and we resurrected in the newness of life. We put away the old things, the old man, the, the desires of greed, the desires of self-exaltation, the desires of pride, the desires of being better, looking down on other people, the desires of all things that we want that are outside his will. With all the, everything the world says that you need is completely against and opposite of what God says. That he'll give you those things if you're walking with him in obedience and you're using them and knowing what their purpose are. But, you know, the enemy wants to give them to you too so he can distort it and destroy you by it. Amen? Amen. I mean, the world says if you have all, if you get a lot, a lot, a lot of money, you've made it, you're, you're good and nothing, you know, you're... You're on top of the world. And we see all these people that are, you know, sports figures, and they have millions and millions of dollars, and what are they doing? They're going from marriage to marriage to marriage. They're crashing their cars, and they're overdosing on drugs and alcohol, and they're killing themselves and committing suicide because they found out that everything the world has to offer doesn't change anything in your heart. It's still empty and void, and now you got a whole bunch of money and a whole bunch of more problems. And it doesn't answer anything. Money is a good to have and it opens opportunities and doors, but if you don't know its purpose and it, it becomes your master and controls you, it's going to destroy you and devastate you and ruin you. Totally. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. In other words, if you're a saint, and this is this is not becoming. You know, did you ever see somebody show up and they're dressed out of vogue or out of, like, 
You know, remember, matter of fact, thank you, Holy Spirit. When, when we're talking about the parables and there's one comes to the wedding feast and he's not dressed with the garments and, the, and, the, and, the, and they say to him, the Lord says, the angels ask him, well, how'd you get in here? You know, what are you doing here? How'd you get here? How did you get here without the right proper dress on? And, and it was talking about the spiritual garments of righteousness. What I'm talking about to show you that picture, like, you know... I remember a time that we were, we were, this was years and years and years ago, we were going to buy someone a pair of boots, and, and his girlfriend or wife at the time, I don't remember if it was his wife or his girlfriend, but she had mini, a mini skirt on and a tank top, and it was the dead of winter. It was like 20 degrees out. And everyone in the whole entire store were all looking at her, because not only was she sticking out like a sore thumb, but she was out of season, and she was, you know, but the thing of it was that, I don't know if that's the only clothes she had, or... You know, she just was, you know, wanted attention or what, because she was very attractive on top of that. So I'm just saying is that we can be in certain situations and not have the right dress spiritually because we don't know who we are. We don't know how we're to behave. And then we assimilate like a chameleon to our surroundings. So it, that's why you're, you know, it says bad character corrupts good morals if you're not strong in the lord and the power of his might if you don't understand who you are and how he expects you to behave and if you're not willing to do that then you're going to you're going to um surrender to wherever you are and to whoever you're with if you know what i'm saying if you're with cool in the gang and everyone's drinking and smoking you're going to be drinking and smoking if you're at church everyone's dressed up and holy and, and quiet but you're not the same all the time you, you, you're vacillating like where we get the word vaseline you're slippery. You, you, the devil can't trust you. God can't trust you. You're in the middle. You're standing on the fence. Wherever I go, if, if this side is that, I'm okay. If I'm over here, I'm good. If I'm over there, I'm not good. It doesn't have anything to do with what's in your heart. It has everything to do with what's around you. Instead of being a, 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 a thermometer, you know, taking your temperature to see what you're and where you're around, you should be a thermostat changing the atmospheres that's with you. And if you can't, then you leave it. You don't fall into it and become part of it. You leave it. You know, they're not going to hang out and come out holy with you or they're not going to stop swearing and telling dirty jokes. Then you leave. You don't go there and just listen and say, well, I'm acting in love. No, you're feeding yourself and filling your... The, it's Yeah, you're being defiled by the world. The world's not going to change for you. The world's only going to change by the power of God. Amen. And if we're not walking in that power of God, if we don't have that authority, it hasn't been given to us because we're willing to surrender and leave everything. Remember the pearl of great price, that when the guy found it, he went and he sold everything to buy the whole field just so he can dig it up and find that one pearl. That's a parable. And the, and the field is the world and the pearl is me and you. And the one that sold everything is Jesus Christ because he left all his glory and honor to come to earth to redeem us and buy us back from the hand of the devil that's controlling us. But if your mind is not renewed, if your will is not given over, if you haven't been changed and washed in the water of the word so that you can be presented to God as a bride without spot or wrinkle, then you're still defiled no matter how much you go to church, no matter what prayers you've said. This is about the heart and the will. Amen. Amen? Amen. That's what he's Amen. saying. But fornication and uncleanness. Why is he saying this? Because this is what's predominant in those that are not walking as children of God. These are children of the of the devil. Your father has the wicked one and the and you have two fathers. In Ephesians chapter two, verse two, if you want to find it out, if you think I'm making this up. Go, not, you don't have to look at it now, but I'm just saying for all those that are watching that want scripture, you go to Ephesians 2.2. 2. You are of your father. You know, the, the, those are the wicked ones that walk in disobedience. And you're going to see on verse 6 where it says what's going to happen to the children of disobedience. But we can walk in it in ignorance and not even know and think everything's cool. That's the worst part. You go to church, you think everything's good, and you think you're going to go to heaven, and you're completely blind and dumb and naked, and you don't even know what's going on and what's happening and who's ruling your life and controlling you and what is influencing you and has overtaken you. Hello? Right. You, know, you know, it's one thing to have, you know, once in a while to have a disagreement or a heated discussion, you know, or, you know, disagreement with someone because if you're not walking with someone that's on is is not equally yoked then you're going to have a disagreement because one's going to want his will you're going to want your will but you should both have god's will Amen. Uh, that's the only will that matters not yours not his not hers not theirs Amen. but his which is found right here amen? Amen. amen amen i mean we've only been here for 30 minutes doing this can i can see your fangs already 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, I took the offering already, right? Praise God. Oh, no, I'm just, I'm just joking. Come on, walk in Christ. And, and, but fornication and uncleanness. You know what uncleanness is? Anything that's not clean. Any, any like, talking fresh or, or making jokes or doing anything sexually. You know, fornication is all, fornication is sex without, outside of marriage. So if you don't have a marriage license, then you can't, you, you're outside of God's will if you're having sex with anyone, including yourself. Okay, and I don't mean to be unclean by saying that, but I'm going to make it clear to everyone, all right? So, he says, but fornication and uncleanness or covetousness. Now, this, this is one that covers so many areas because covetous means that it's mine and it's mine and I like it and you don't touch it, you don't rub it, you don't, you know, you don't mess it up, you don't break it, you know, this is what I want, this is what I have, and this is my will, and I'm not going to change it for nobody. Uh, you know, I'm coveting it. You know, um, and the normal normal would be like if I had $10 and you wanted to borrow a dollar because we are at ice cream stand or something, and you didn't have no money on you, and I'd say, no, all I got is 10 That's just got enough for me. But that's so simply, the, the covetousness goes so far in every single area of our life that if you're not looking at it biblically, if you're not understanding how it applies to you, then you're going to be blinded by it and overtaken every single time in, in many multiple areas. Even, even not that I have arrived, but I've been studying the Word for more than a decade, is that the more that I look into the perfect law of liberty, the more that the Lord shows me things that are out of line. And the more that... He corrects me. And the more that he draws me in by his love to give more, to give more. He says, you know, if you want to find your life for my sake, you have to be willing to lose it. If you keep your life for your sake, you're going to lose it. So if you want to do what you want to do, you want to continuously do it, and God's going to let you do it, he ain't going to stop you. But you're going to end up losing At the end, when you stand before Christ, he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I do, did not know you. Depart from me. And you that work worketh lawlessness. Lawlessness means that you lived your life outside of the parameters of the Word of God. So you did what you wanted to do no matter what. You didn't care. Because we have free will and God won't stop you. So we can do whatever we want, whenever we want, with whoever we want, whenever we want, wherever we want. And and, and But God sees it all. And, and it's like I said, this is not a message of can, can, to condemn you. It's a message to instruct you to, to look at the plumb line of your life, where you are, where you're going. How do you think? You know, do you think that your life is your own and that you have the future to do whatever you please and to become whoever you want? You do it when God, if you're in God's will. And he's, like I said, in the beginning, he's going to give you a life that's better than you could ever dream or hope of. But it's not going to be, or should I say, not always, it's going to always have pain and suffering in it because he's going to use that to draw you to him. He's use that to, to try your faith in the furnace of affliction. A amen? Yeah. I mean, not everyone goes through this. In one way or another, you will because life is full of, you know, things that we don't want and don't like to look at or face because we live in a fallen world. And people are hateful and cruel and mean and self-centered and covetousness. Not everyone comes up to you and say, I love you and here, here's here's." hundred dollars go buy some groceries or something right you see them they'll run you over with the car and get out of my way pass you on the right pass you on the left cut you off and tell you how how what their iq is because they don't care it's only about what they think what i want what i what i think what i want and what i say right now so i can see a trail left behind people what they do because they don't care what what gets discarded they don't care what collateral damage is left behind they don't care who they hurt all they care about is getting to what they want as long as it satisfies them and makes them feel good then it's good right Amen. but it's not good for god and it's not good for your eternity and it's not good to make you and turn you into a covetous monster self-centered self-appeasing and living through instant gratification irregardless of who it hurts or who you condemn I got really quiet in this Catholic church. Amen. Hallelujah. And uncleanness or covetousness. Let it, let it not be once named among you. 
as become its saints. He's saying, you know what, this shouldn't even take place one time. This should never take place because it's not becoming. It's out of order. It's out of line. It's the old man. It's the old attitude. It's the old person. It's the unrenewed man that argues. It says pride, uh, contention and strife come only by pride. The only reason why you're arguing is because you have pride in yourself and you think that your your thought and your will and your way is better. And, and you're not realizing that you have to esteem each other higher than yourself in the fear of God. If you're not esteeming each other higher than yourself, you have no fear of God, no matter what you say. And the way you treat your husband and your wife or whoever it is, is the way you treat God and think about God. So if you're yelling and screaming and crap and demeaning and punishing and being childish, as this is where the whole message is. Whose child are you? Are you a child of the devil, which works through the flesh? Or are you a child of God, which w destroys the flesh? And looks for it in every area of your life to kill it. So it doesn't raise its ugly head. And that destroys and brings in destruction in your relationships and in your life. And leads you down the path of selfish self-centeredness. This is every, This is the thing. Remember in the Garden of Eden, after the devil came to Eve, they were naked and ashamed. So in other words, what happened was they immediately they became self-aware. Self became to life. Before that, they're walking with God in the cool of the day, listening and hearing from God, and, and, and they only knew God, and they only knew God's will. But when they turned away and did their own will, they got captivated, and self-awareness became alive, and that's why where we, we became selfish, and we become mine, me, mine, no, I'm not going to. See, the, the will of the person became the dominant ruling force in our life instead of the will of God. That's what, whose child are you? Cain and Abel. Cannibal. The old nature will always eat up the good nature. And you become cannibalized by your flesh. And it eats your spirit. And you become a servant and subservient to your flesh. Because it's always stronger. Because you're not feeding it. And you're not reading the word of God. And you're not doing anything to build it up. And you're wondering why you can't get free. It says that he that looketh into the perfect law of liberty and be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of all the work. Work. It's work. It's constantly on guard. Stand there. Stand. Stand. Having, having done all to stand, stand there with your loins girded about. You know what? You have to be vigilant. You have to be alert. You have to be constantly aware of what's going on. I'm not talking about getting crazy and being um, super spiritual or anything. I'm just saying is that you're, you're, when, he says, when you go, it, I'll talk with you. And, and when, when you go, I'll lead you. If you're giving over to God and you're praying to the Lord and you're asking him to help you, then you're submitting to him and then he's going to help you. But if you're not and you're prideful, in other words, you think that you're okay and your way is good, then you're going to be, you know, it says he resists the prideful when he gives grace to the humble. So we have to humble ourselves and come to God on a, a continuous daily basis. We have to, you know, we go out, you know, it says sin is lurking at the door of your, right, to devour you, to have dominance over you, right? So the door is your will, and the doorway is life. Outside this doorway, there's everything going on, and it's chaos, right? And, and confusion, and murder, and deception, and everything that's out in the world. As soon as you leave the privacy of your temple, you're exposing yourself to what's out there, and you need to be protected, otherwise you're going to be dissolved, you're going to be destroyed, you're going to be sucked in and, and, and overwhelmed and not know what to do or how to protect yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And then you wonder why, you know, I, I don't understand why we're arguing, I don't understand why we're fighting, I don't understand why... How why did I, how did I end up here? Because you you're not reading your word, you're not praying, you're not calling on God, you're not humbling yourself, you're walking in your own will, you're walking in your own mind, and that that's why you're gonna argue. You know, I want to do this, or you're gonna do this. You know, I'm not talking in every area. I'm talking in you know specific things. I'm talking about in general in your whole life. Where is your heart? Whose child are you? Are, have you made a conscious decision and said, this is it, I found it, I know the reason of life, and I'm going to throw myself into it no matter what. I'm going to trust God with everything. Or am I going to dabble here and there and still try to fix it? You know, in our fallen nature, that's, you know, how many years did it take me to realize that I'm not going to be able to change Carmen by my words? And I'm only going to end up in a fight and she's going to be mad at me and I'm going to suffer. Even to the day, still, once in a while, I get caught up and realize, wait, wait a minute, I can't change her. I need to love her for who she is, even if I don't like it. 
because that's the only way God's going to change her and me. It took me decades to learn that, just like when God was speaking to me in scriptures in my mind and I was being disobedient. I was oblivious to it. I didn't know he was speaking to me in scripture. I was just doing what I wanted and I was so overwhelmed and pleasing myself that it was good. I thought I was all good. I was. It's good. I'm, I'm, I'm doing what's good. It feels good to me. It must be good for God. Hello. Amen. I got no amen. Hallelujah. I guess I was all alone on this, but for amen. this, for this, you know, for this, you know. In other words, why am I telling you this? Neither filthiness, nor fornication, nor uncleanness, nor covetousness, nor filthiness, nor foolish talking. Foolish talking. How many of you talk foolishly? Anything that's outside the Word of God is foolish. Okay? Nor jesting, which are not convenient. You know, jesting, I was only kidding, or, you know, this and that, joking around and horse playing, and that's jesting. You know, and saying inappropriate things in the wrong times. That Those things are in your, if they're in your heart and they're going to come out of your mouth, they're in your mind. If you've attended to them, then you've allowed those seeds to come and they're going to come out. If you say, no, I'm taking every thought captive to the obedience of God. I'm casting down images, imaginations, anything that exalts itself. My emotions, my anger, my pride, my dominance, my physical strength, I'm going to use it against you because I'm superior to you. Don't you understand that I know better than you and I'm going to tell you what to do? Amen. This is vice versa. This is just not male, female. This is female, male. This is both. There's enmity between the two. That's why it says the spirit and the soul are at war. There's enmity. It's a war. It's a continuous fight within you, outside of you, and anyone that's in your presence. And everyone here can say amen. 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 Because, praise God. Amen. True. Um, for this you know that no whoremonger, this is somebody that is lit, is going and practicing and having, you know, S-E-X with people that are W-H-O-R-E's, uh, you know, someone that is not married and they're doing this on a continual basis, you know, you're sleeping around with he, she, me, and and everybody and cool in the gang, right? That you become it becomes a lifestyle, and it doesn't matter who it is because you start receiving your value and your worth from somebody that told you they love you, and after they get what they want, they're gone. Bye, and then you're left with nothing but the ashes. Hello, and I know I'm up in everyone's business, Amen. but it's the truth. You know, the truth will set you free. Amen. Don't believe what someone will tell you. You know what? If they love you, they'll be willing to wait for. 15, 20 years, they'll, they'll love you until, until you marry them, until you, you know, that's all, even the secular song, if you love, put a ring on it, but the ring wasn't about, you know, it's the material thing, but if you're going to marry someone, and you commit to them, then you're going to say, you know what, I, like we do when we do marriages, I, I am accepting you as my wife, and I'm forsaking all others, that means no one else in the world has got my attention, I'm not going to look at them, I'm not going to think about them, I'm not going to have soul ties to them, I'm not going to watch them when they walk by, I don't care what they look like, or, or what they can give me, or what the world promises, how they're dressed, then they're not mine, they're forsaken, and I'm not going to look at them, I'm not going to disrespect my wife or disrespect my husband by feeding my flesh on something that I think I want that is drawing me away to death and damnation. You understand this is a war for your soul. But remember last week, how to kill sin by the by the spirit. This is a war for your soul and the war that's going on, our soul is what's up for grabs by the devil or, or God. It's our free will, right? He will empower you and he'll grace you Excuse me, he'll love you and he'll give you mercy, he'll correct you, but you have to be walking with him, you have to be seeking him. He's not going to force his will on you like the devil will. The devil will force his will all over you. If you give him an inch, he's going to take a million miles. Amen? Amen. All right. Nor unclean person covetous man. Wait, for this you know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man. You know what, greedy person? Who is an idolater? You know what you do? See, you listen to what he said. All those scriptures, all those things, you know, um, a whoremonger, a covetous man, an unclean person, a filthy person, a fornicator, all those, all those things, who, he's saying, who is an idolater? You know what you're saying? You know what he's telling you here, right here? I'm going to tell you this in the spirit and flush this out. He's saying that, that what you're doing is you're putting your, your will and your way and what you like becomes an idol. Remember, remember the second commandment, thou shalt have no other idols before me, thou shalt have no other gods, thou shalt make no false images. These images are made in our mind, and they, they go into our heart, and they control us. And you can have, 
if idols in your life and you and I'm not even talking about material ones I'm talking about your will your mind you know whatever you want to do that's outside the parameters of God that's why he's saying is whoever does this right who is an idolater whoever does these things and lives this way in their life you're an you're an idolater and you're idolizing your own will and your own will, your own ways and your own thoughts above God's, and you're walking in rebellion contrary to Him. And He's saying you're not going to enter the kingdom. You're not going to live for eternal. You're not going to get eternal life if you do this. If you live in these things and you practice this, you're not going to heaven. Period. I don't care what they tell you. O S A S. Once saved, always saved. It's a lie from the pit of hell. You have to walk circumspectly and obediently with God. You have to surrender your life. If you're bought with a price and your life is not yours, how can you idolatrize your own will? That's saying my life is mine, and I don't care what you say. I'm going to do what I want, and then I'll repent later. But you have built up a witness, a spoken conversation to God that is saying contrary to what you're speaking, you're just deceiving yourself. You're walking in idolatry. Amen. That was hot. Amen. That was a lot. I was starting to feel oppression. Oh, boy. Who is an idol? Listen. Who is an idolater? Comma hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God? You're not going to get an inheritance. I'm not making this up. I'm not trying to be legalistic. I'm not trying to punish you. I'm just speaking the word of God and I'm putting it in a way where you can understand it. Okay, it's your choice to do it. Might you're going to listen to God's voice and you're going to what well, His tugging on your heart because I can't correct you. I'm not here to condemn anyone. I'm just reading the word of God. If you're being condemned, that's the Spirit of God pulling that. He says, if you hear my voice in the day, obey my voice and, and listen to my voice and act upon my voice. Don't shrug it off and walk away and just do the same thing. You're being stubborn and disobedient in idolatry. You're in idolatry. Let no man deceive you with vain words for because of... Listen to this. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Let no man deceive you with vain words. What is the church... The, People on TV, you know, if you they're making covetousness out of you. They're making you, you know, what they're fleecing the sheep. If you send in thirty nine seventy eight, and according to Psalms thirty nine seventy eight, you know, you're gonna have this, you're gonna have that, and you're gonna be all good, and you're gonna be rich, and you're gonna have houses, your best life now, and you you know, everything's gonna be wonderful. You know, pray that that the, the country turns around, and everything stays the way it is, because they're fleecing the sheep. They're taking all this money, and they're living high on the high, and they're liars, they're deceivers, and and they're false teachers. And you got to recognize and understand, I'm not talking about anyone in particular, but I'm talking about anyone. And you got to know it for yourself. How are you going to know that? By in, being in the Word of God. He's going to tell you. Don't listen to them. Don't watch that. That's a lie. It doesn't line up with my Word. It's not truth. Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about suffering and giving up and surrendering. Covetousness. They're making covetousness. That's what it says. They make covetousness out of you. They're coveting you and they're fleecing you and they're taking your money and they're doing what they want with it. And they, don't, they could care less about you. They don't even know who you are. Amen. If you don't give a certain amount of money, you don't even get a thank you. Or if you give a certain amount of money, like $1,000 or more, you get a handwritten letter. I'm not saying they're all wrong. There are a lot of good teachers and teachers that are proving the truth, and God allows them to have big platforms. But most of the ones that are out there are fleecing, and mm. they're and they're bleeding, and they're making covet their wolves in sheep clothing. Amen. Uh, hello? Amen. You can know them by their fruit. Yeah. You know, what are they teaching? Does the Bible say you can live the best way any way you want and go to heaven? No. 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 You know, I don't know which one they're reading, but you know, you gotta figure it out for yourself. It says, Let no man let no man deceive you. The Spirit of God will never deceive you, and the devil will deceive you, and through every person he can has a chance to. Because remember what Jesus said in Matthew 24, in Mark 12, and in Luke 21, in all the things he says when they asked him when the time come, he said, Be not deceived. The first thing in all three of the gospels. The, be not deceived. Many will come in my name. Many false teachers will rise. Many one will bring in heresies and even and speaking damnation and 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 forgiving and and telling you not to eat meat and not to marry and don't give in marrying. And we see homosexuality. We see ordained ministers of, of you know lesbians and 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 all that stuff. And I'm not talking about a person. We're dealing with a spirit here. Amen. Amen? It, you can't have. Filth in a consecrated place. It defiles it. 
You know, right. remember when when the when the people came and they attacked Israel, they slaughtered all the priests and they destroyed all the all the things, the goblets. They were drinking wine out of it, and, and they they took pigs and they slaughtered them on the altar because a pig is a defiled thing for according to Levitical law. And let me say something too, is that has been burning on my heart, and I don't care who says or doesn't say or, or says they don't listen, they don't know what I'm talking about. But the Levitical law is only the first five books of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, um, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's the law that he's talking about, the covenant, the old covenant. The new covenant, all the rest after that is historical history of the church, and it's the, um, the books of wisdom and the books of Psalms, and all the minor and major prophets that are all warning and speaking of what happened then and what is going to happen now. Every All of prophecy is always fulfilled twice. And it talks about Israel and it's talking about the church. Talking about Israel is talking about Jacob. Jacob is the regener um, Jacob is the unregenerated man. Remember, Jacob wrestled with the with the angel of the Lord, and then he said, "I shall change your name to Israel." It's a picture of someone that's born again, someone that's changed, someone that has learned to crucify. You're no longer the same person. If anyone be in Christ, here's the, the scripture for it: He's a new creation. If if anyone be in Christ. He's a new creation. Behold, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So you don't do the things you used to do. You don't act the way you used to do. You don't go the way you used to do. You don't sleep around the way you used to do. You have a new man. You're a new person. You are given over to Christ. Your life is not your own. You honor Christ with your bodies. And you glorify him with your members. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you take like five more minutes of this? For because of these things, come, are you saying, be, let no man, this is verse 6 in chapter 5 of Ephesians. Let no man deceive you with vain words that I just said, right? They're telling you lies, vain words. Remember, love, with, what, love without dissimulation from an unfeigned heart, vain, vain. You know, it's what you think, it's what you want, it's who you like, who you want to give your love to instead of everyone. He says, love your enemies, God bless you. Right? It says pray for those that dis despitefully use you so that you can be a child of your father. See, we're, this whole message is about children. Are, who, are you, who are you a child of? Okay? It's up to you. Amen. Who you're going to yield your members to. Let, let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things, what things? All the things he just mentioned. All those things that are disobedience. All those things that are spiritual and self-idolatry and flesh. These are the things that make our flesh feel good. The lust of the eyes, the pride of life, and the lust of the, of the, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? What we see, what we think, what we touch, where we go, what we think is good. You know, right? It's good. It's good to have instant gratification. We were talking about this on Wednesday, that when you're, when you're a drug addict or, or, and that you don't have no drugs, or you're in the downtime, you go and you buy gobs of candy. I know none of you did this, but for us of those that were in the world and struggled with that, you know, we go and get candy and eat candy because candy is instant gratification to your flesh. Mm -hmm. And then you appease your flesh because you can't get high, so you get a sugar high. And you get yeah. the taste, the taste. In our mouths, we all do it. What yeah. tastes good? Come and see that the Lord tastes good. Why do you think he's saying that? Because the things that when you taste of him and you see that he's good, it's better and outweighs everything. How are you going to pray and fast if you're continuously feeding your flesh? Mm -hmm. Pray and fast. It didn't say when you fast. It says, it says, it didn't say if you fast. It says when you fast and pray. It is a lifestyle. It's already known that you. The reason why we flat we we fast is to crucify our flesh so that it gets weaker and weaker and weaker and our spirit gets stronger and we can submit unto God and God releases the power and rewards us for doing that, presenting our body a living sacrifice. You know, and if you don't have God, if He doesn't put you on a fast and you're going to do it by willpower, you're going to crash and burn probably in an hour. Do most, you know, what I'm saying an extended fast and, and a fast. But if you're very strong in the spirit and you do this on a regular basis, you know, you start getting, if you stop drinking coffee, you get headaches, your body starts purging itself from all the free radicals, and you get shaky and you get, you know, feel dizzy and. You know, you start peeing a lot and pooping. All that stuff that's in you, the, all this garbage that you've been putting in your life for all these years starts coming out. And, and, and your body starts reacting to it, not only physically, but spiritually also. Amen. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of what? Disobedience. Disobedience. Amen.
be not ye therefore, don't do it. That's what be ye not, be not ye therefore. You know, guess what? American Ang uh, today's 21st century. Don't do it. Run from it. Don't don't get messed up in it. Don't get caught up in it. Don't. We, this is a trap. It's a bait. You're not going to see it, and if you take it, you're going to be snared and caught, and you're not going to be able to get out on your own power. So he's saying, be be not ye therefore partakers with what? With them, with all those that do these things, with all those that are are doing hanging out and you know cool in the gang, and you think it's cool to do it, and you think you're in vogue because you're hanging out with them, and you don't know that everybody's washing down the sewer. Hello. They're all going to the sewer and they don't even know it. Mm -hmm. Lying, broke, busted, disgusted, and spiritually ignorant of everything. Amen. Come on now. Even in the natural, they tell you. You know, do you have do you have any history of uh, heart disease in your family? Mm -hmm. Generations of the sins we passed down to the third, the fourth, and the fifth generation. Oh, do you have sure? Do you have diabetes in your family? Heck no, my family, my father's God. I got a pure, perfect blood. I don't have no diseases. I don't have no, no passed down generational curses. I, I repented of all of them. I broke it off my family, broke it off my life, and I'm not passing it on to anyone. Amen. 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 I don't want to send the, the same demons into my son's life that I had to struggle with and fight and to get free with because of through God's power and let him go through that same thing. Then come on. If you love, if you even think you love your kids, you never do that. And you have to understand this isn't about you. This is about them. This is about your children. This is about your grandchildren. This is about the freedom that's in Christ and standing on it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Be not ye therefore partakers of them or with them. For you were sometimes, listen, now he's talking about what I said before. For you were sometimes darkness. Remember, we used to act like that. We used to hang out like that. And we didn't know any better. It was all cool. Everybody did it. And we didn't know any different. But now, it says, but now are you light in the Lord. So in other words, if now you have the light of the gospel shining in your heart. Now you know who you are and whose you are and who you were bought by is Christ. What are you going to do? Are you going to continuously live the old way? Or are you going to make a choice and to live the new way? And you're going to seek God to empower you by his grace and mercy. Are you going to repent of everything that he shows you? Are you going to receive the correction of a father like a dear child? Not just any child, but a dear child. See, some childs are rebellious and defiant and self-willed. And I'm not talking about numerical child, children, all of us. Remember, we're all children of God. Or if you are, if you've been bought with the price. We're all creations of God, but we're not all children of God. It don't matter. Amen. So he's here saying right now to the little kid and just swatted his butt because he's not listening and he's doing what he wants to do. And that's what we are. We are out in the mud. We're out in the, in the muck and we think we're doing good and we think we're doing God's will and, and, and God has to swat us and get us our attention because there's a lot of things you could do that are even good, but if they're not God's will, it's, it's not in his, it's, it's disobedience, right? Mm -hmm. you no, know, if I tell you to study for an hour and you start, or if I tell you to study for two hours and you study for 15 minutes, you did what was good, but you only did it for 15 minutes. You know, you didn't, if I tell you to study for an hour and you studied for five minutes, I tell you to clean your room and you do just the closet and you left the rest of the place a mess, you did what was good, but you didn't complete it. You know what I'm saying? You got to walk in the whole will, the whole counsel of God. That's why we need to learn it, understand it, and internalize it so that it can correct us and instruct us. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, don't preach. Preach, preach me down, yell me down, shout me down. When I'm preaching. For you were sometimes, but now are ye light in the, in the Lord. Walk as children of light. In other words, your lifestyle should be, that's what the walk means. Your every day. Your walk is what you do, where you go, what you say, who you hang around with, and what you do. That's what you're doing. You're walking. You're walking before God and he sees everything. And, 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 and the devil sees everything and he's writing it all down. And they're both gathering information for the day. And the devil uses what he gets and knowledge against you to push your buttons and get you to fall into the flesh and do the things that, you know, that are in your flesh so that he can have an operation and opening to come in and to bring in more of his that destructive little imps and to talk to your mind and to drag you away and to put the temps, temptations and and things in your way that are against God's will. And if you, the more, remember, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, so shall he also reap. Those that sow to the flesh will reap death to 
to destruction. Those that sow to the Spirit will leave life everlasting. Do you not know to who you yield your members? To him you become a servant to be a slave, uh, whether of sin unto death or righteousness unto life, that life everlasting. It's not about, um, you know, structurally condemning or putting controls and parameters around you. It's about your heart giving over to God and He will do the work. I can't change you and I don't want to. I love you just the way you are and I watch your lives and I see you struggle with things that I know you don't have to, but I can't say anything to you. I can pray for you, which I do all the time, and I can speak into your life, but you ultimately have the choice to make no matter who you are, just no matter how old you are. Amen? And you got to make the right choice. So, Father, we just thank you for your word that is so relevant and pertinent in that all things remain as they've been. There's nothing new under the sun in that. The same spirits and the same flesh and the same opportunities, they just repackage themselves in different ways and opportunities. So that we thank you that your light has illuminated our heart today and our minds and has changed us as we looked into the glory of Jesus Christ, the living word, and has brought us from glory to glory to glory. It has brought up opportunities and has brought up... Um, exhortation and uplifting and it has brought up conviction and has brought up a challenge for us to look into our daily activities and our thoughts and our and where and what and how we're saying and speaking to each other that we would walk as dear children before you loving each other as you have given us the example in Jesus mighty name I love you I bless you and hope to see you tomorrow if anyone likes prayer come up I'm here and there's no big hurry today if anyone would like to stay